Hi there, my name is Dylan Walker. I'm the Advanced Technical Support Engineer for the Schneider Electric Telemetry products. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about the Series E configurator software and how to use it to configure a 535E SCADAPAC RTU. Most of the procedure I'm going to show you is applicable to all the SCADAPAC RTU range. This software is useful for configuring the communication parameters, local and remote I.O., and many more features of the SCADAPAC RTU. It also allows you to read the configuration that is already inside the RTU. The SCADAPAC RTU itself is used for monitoring and controlling local I.O. and Modbus slave I.O. in remote and harsh locations. The master SCADAPAC RTU communicates this information to a base SCADA system such as ClearSCADA. To start, we go to our start menu, select SCADAPAC eConfigurator. There are a couple of ways of starting your first project. If you have an RTU in front of you, you can read the configuration from the RTU. But if not, just create a new RTU configuration. We're using a 535E SCADA pack today, so select SCADA pack 500 series and the SCADA pack 535E. The simplest way to communicate with a factory reset RTU is via USB. So to make it communicate via USB, go to the drop down communication menu and select USB. Go to file then and read the RTU configuration. Okay, once the configuration has been read into your RTU, open the general folder and click on controller status page. In here you can see the uptime of the RTU, the reset reason, which correlates to a hex decimal number in the reset reason table. You can also see the current SCADA pack firmware version, as well as the IO version. Uh, if you press refresh, it will up update your uptime and you can also see the input voltage and whether it is normal or out of range. Now we're going to look at how to communicate via serial. So open the ports folder in the left hand side and the ports 0 to 4 page. The first thing we want to look at is the RTU DMP address. After you factory reset this will be 0. We need you to change this to a unique number. I'm going to use 12. Uh, this has to be unique because if we have two different RTUs at DMP address of 12 on the network and you try to communicate with the slave device 12, the network will get confused and not know where to send that information. Next we have to look at the port 2 function. We're using port 2 for the serial communication. Uh, at the moment these are all set up for serial communication so just leave them as is. Write your new DMP address to your RTU. Once the write is complete, go into the communication drop down box and select serial. Click on your communication settings icon. Uh, make sure the parameters are the same as your port 2 function and that you're communicating with the right serial port. Uh, try refresh your page and you'll notice the traffic lights down the bottom go yellow and don't return to green, so cancel your transaction. The reason for this is you haven't updated your target DMP address. So update this, then go into controller status and refresh your page again and you'll see the traffic light has come back to green. Now we're going to set the RTU up for Ethernet communication. To do this we go into the TCP slash IP page and we're going to use the Ethernet 1 port for this function. And then add your IP address. The IP address it only has to be on the same subnet as your computer and the rest of your network. And the final number has to be unique. You cannot have two devices with the same IP address. Enter a subnet mask of 255.255.255 and the rest of this can be ignored. Open the connections options. Click on network settings. Go to change adapter options. Open ethernet. Select Internet Protocol version 4 properties and select use the following IP address and then add an IP address that will put your computer on the same subnet as your RTU. Write the IP address to the RTU. This will require a controller restart. It will prompt you for this automatically here. Once this is finished, go to the general controller status page and refresh it to make sure the RTU has come back online. 
uh, you can see ours has. Now go to the communication drop down box, select TCP, click on the communications box and enter your IP address and the TCP port number of the RTU is 20,000. Once you've done this, refresh your page again and you'll see the traffic light come back to green. Thank you for watching. If this video does not have all the information on communicating with the SCADAPAC RTU that you need, you can learn more from the SCADAPAC eConfigurator user manual, which can be found online at the address you see on the page in front of you.